The Big Bang Theory is today's prevailing cosmological model explaining the origin and evolution of the universe. It proposes that the universe began as an extremely hot, dense point of energy and has expanded ever since. The Big Bang Theory, in its earliest form, was proposed by Belgian priest and physicist Georges Lemaitre. He suggested that the universe began from a primeval atom, or a cosmic egg, which at a certain moment started expanding. His theory was largely based on Einstein's reformed field equation and his own idea that the universe was expanding. Edwin Hubble supposed in 1929 that the recessional velocity of a galaxy increases with its distance from Earth. This behavior became known as Hubble's Law, although this law had been proposed two years earlier by Georges Lemaitre. According to this law, the universe is expanding. Edwin Hubble is regarded as providing crucial observational support for Lemaitre's theory. According to his observations, the distant galaxies were moving away from Earth, implying the universe was expanding. This observation and its interpretation was a key turning point in cosmology. It offered tangible evidence for a dynamic universe. In 1931, Georges Lemaitre proposed a radical idea in his paper. According to him, the universe began from a primeval atom, or a cosmic egg, that exploded and expanded to form the universe. It was initially a creationist theory. Some critics associated the Big Bang with religious creationism. Over time, this idea gained popularity, and after 20 to 30 years, it had the backing of the majority of the scientific community. It achieved broad scientific consensus. This consensus effectively buried the question of the theory's religiosity. We think that it is worth re-asking this question after all this time. Is the Big Bang a religious theory? Has this theory justified the scientific consensus? Did religion once again dominate over science in the matter of the creation and functioning of the universe? Lemaitre was a Catholic priest whose theory involved a beginning to the universe. Lemaitre himself maintained that his theory was rooted in physics and not theological ideas. He argued that science explains how the universe works, whereas religion addresses why it exists. He argued that the two need not conflict. During the mid-20th century, the Big Bang and steady-state theories were both viable explanations for the universe's expansion. However, the Big Bang gained increasing support due to interpretations of new observations and developments. The observation of the cosmic microwave background radiation is interpreted as supporting the Big Bang. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, the Big Bang theory was further refined, particularly through the development of inflationary cosmology. This theory was introduced by physicist Alan Guth in 1981. It explains the rapid expansion of the universe in its earliest moments, giving an explanation for several puzzles in the original Big Bang model. So, to create the Big Bang theory, three components were needed. An equation that could explain expansion, contraction, or constant state of the universe. A certain interpretation of some observations and a physicist creationist who chooses one possibility of the equation. These components all came together to create the Big Bang Theory. This theory claims that the universe was created in a moment. Based on certain calculations, it is believed that this beginning occurred 13.787 billion years ago. What kind of social consciousness preached and continues to preach that the universe was created in a single moment of time? Religion. What social consciousness holds the view that something can be created from nothing? Which social consciousness believes that the universe is a free lunch? Religion. A theory that needs another ad hoc theory to survive is weak. The Big Bang theory is weak precisely for this reason. It's not that science lacks the desire to know how and when the universe was constructed, but science differs from other social consciousnesses in one essential aspect. That is, to explain a hypothesis in explaining something, it uses scientific methods to test said hypothesis. In other words, 
Science does not invent new hypotheses to keep the original one alive. Certainly the most significant part of the answer to the question of whether the Big Bang is a religious theory lies in its scientific weight. After all, a scientific theory must first stand up to scientific methods and testing before it can either align or conflict with other forms of knowledge. The main difference between science and religion rests precisely in the fact that science, when presenting a hypothesis, moves toward either confirming or disproving it. Whereas religion has only one option. It puts forward a postulate and, to defend the first postulate, invents a second one to protect the first, continuing in this manner. Every theory develops over time. The Big Bang theory has also evolved to the point that today, it differs significantly from its original form. In fact, the term Big Bang today does not refer to just one theory, but a collection of theories that support the essence of the initial concept. If a theory is not self-sufficient to stand on its own, it requires other theories to support it. And if these supporting theories are even more unstable, then the original theory does not deserve to be upheld. Such a theory is the Big Bang theory in relation to the inflationary theory. For a theory to survive, it must be able to explain observed facts or be compatible with other theories that have a high degree of confirmation. The numerous flaws of the Big Bang theory can be divided into two groups. Flaws that are mm -hmm. thought to have been overcome by inflationary theory to some degree, and flaws mm -hmm. that are not addressed by inflationary theory. The inflationary theory is a theory developed in 1981 to rescue the Big Bang theory from its difficulties. There are four big flaws of the Big Bang theory that are thought to have been explained by the inflationary theory. The flatness problem, the horizon problem, the monopole problem, the antimatter problem. However, the main problem with the inflationary theory itself is that it solves the unexplainable problems of the original Big Bang theory with an untestable theory. The very hypothesis of the inflationary theory is untestable, and the problems it claims to address are, by definition, pushed into the regions of the unobservable universe. But there are other four big problems not covered by inflationary theory. 1. Violation of conservation laws. This is particularly concerning regarding the violation of the first law of thermodynamics which states that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. The theory suggests that the universe emerged from a singularity, implying creation from nothing, which some view as problematic. 2. Dependence on adjustable parameters. The Big Bang model requires numerous adjustable parameters to fit observational data, raising concerns about its validity. For instance, the cosmic deceleration parameter and Hubble constant have been adjusted multiple times to align with various observations, leading to accusations of ad hoc theorizing. 3. Problems with galaxy formation. The formation of large-scale structures, such as superclusters of galaxies, poses a challenge to the Big Bang model. Observations indicate that these structures are too massive and complex to have formed within the time frame allowed by the Big Bang theory. 4. The transition from the idea of a primeval atom to everywhere-happened universe. The name Big Bang, though considered pejorative by supporters of the theory, aligns well with its original concept, the primeval atom. However, according to modern Big Bang theory, there was no explosion as the starting point of the universe. If the universe didn't explode into existence, where did it all come from? Everywhere happened? Everywhere from the singularities? What is a singularity? According to modern physics, a singularity is an extremely hot zero-volume entity with infinite energy density. A singularity means the equation to determine the density is divided by zero-volume. What does zero-volume mean? No one knows. But it ultimately leads to the idea that the universe was created from nothing, which Stephen Hawking famously stated with the words, but the universe is the ultimate free lunch. And so we find ourselves standing at the crossroads of science, philosophy, and belief, grappling with questions that have spanned centuries and ignited minds. In the pursuit of truth, 
science must remain grounded in evidence, unafraid to discard what cannot stand on its own. And as the Big Bang theory continues to be debated, it challenges us to question whether it represents a genuine step forward in our understanding of the cosmos, or a retreat into the familiar comfort of creation myths repackaged in the language of science.